Thanks, Claude. And we want to continue to encourage our fans and fan base. I know they'll turn out uh, and be loud and proud, but really with game day there, we want to get everybody to the stadium um, as early as we can, especially with the last hour of those guys shared in there. I'd also like to uh, congratulate Nicobe, um for his uh, award, community service award, and national award. Um, tremendous job by him. He's a, he's a model uh, player and person and student. And uh, for him to get that award, I think it's uh, uh, pretty incredible, the job he's done since being here and uh, comes from a great family. And um, it's a great award for the University of Georgia to get recognized, to have a player of that caliber be put on that team. Well, that will open it up. Coach, against uh, Vanderbilt, you had a chance to get a look at a lot of your younger players or people that don't always get playing time. How do you think Broderick Jones did at left tackle? Broderick's been playing a good bit. You know, he's played left and right. Um, he's not playing in situations where we have leads. You know, he's playing in a normal rotation, and he's done a good job. Uh, he continues to improve, work hard. You know, he, he, he can't make uh, focus errors and focus mistakes. He has a couple of those games. He's got to get those out of uh, kind of out of his repertoire. But he uh, continues to get better. I think he's a really good athlete and uh, bends well. And he's got a great upside. So we want to see him keep practicing well, getting better, adding depth to our team, uh, trying to create options for us on our offensive line. And the better he plays, the more options we have. Um, Coach, I want to ask you about, about Marcus Rosemary Jack saying, I think he got kind of injured a little bit the other day. And I guess while I'm at it, just the weekly update on Darnell and Ty Key, Arian Smith, and uh, who else am I forgetting here? Um, Dom, Dom Blaylock. Yeah, we're, we're, we're Dar Darnell and Ty Key are back. You know, we did not take them on the 70 for the main purpose of having them work out. So they got a good workout in Friday. Uh, they got a good workout in Saturday uh, uh, here without us being here. And, and they both ran really well. Um, they're back in drills, they're practicing, they're doing everything this week, full go, um, so that hopefully we have them available. I, mean, I haven't seen them physically practice yet, so we still got to see that, but we're under the expectation they'll be able to uh, go and play and, and, and be, be able to help us. You know, I think that time off can hurt you, especially when you haven't played in quite a while, but uh, we got to bring those guys back and be smart about their reps today and kind of work them back in. Uh, Dom still nursing a hamstring, hopeful to get him back. Uh, Rosemuth was just an ankle. Um, we don't know how fast it's going to turn around. Um, we're certainly hopeful to get him back. Um, I think that's every, was that everybody. Yeah, Arian, uh, again, didn't make the trip. He's been bothered by a, uh, a shin contusion that he had uh, prior to, you know, well, I guess it was prior to the South Carolina game. It happened in the UAB game, and he's been working his way back, and we got really good recovery by not taking him last week, and we're hopeful he's able to go this week. Arkansas is, uh, is evidence that sometimes uh, SEC schedules are tougher than you, you may think when you first look at them in, in preseason. With the conference expanding, what do you see uh, in the future for, for scheduling and how this is going to affect getting in more of these attractive uh, non-conference games? Yeah, it's, uh, I think the conference expanding is going to allow us to have more opportunities to play more teams. You know, It's going to depend on what format uh, the presidents and uh, Commissioner Sankey decide to go with, but that, that's the least of my concerns right now. I promise you that. I don't. Uh, I don't know what they plan to do. I, I'm certainly in favor of uh, being able to play more SEC games because I think it's it's good for the league. It's good for the conference. Kirby, I wanted to ask you about the scout team. You know, it seems like that comes up with you know every every guy that we ask about. Just what is it about that scout team here that allows so many guys to go there and develop? You know, is there a particular closeness with those guys down there and I guess the second part of that, or do you do anything different with that unit here than maybe y'all did at, you know, Alabama or, or places you've been before? I, I just think it's it's our standard. It's it's the expectation. You know, we sell it here really hard that um, the development is important. Well, how do I develop? I can develop by going on the scout team and getting quality reps. There's a lot of our kids that get. Uh, better faster on the scout team than they do on the first or second unit because the first and second unit doesn't go against the same quality that the scout team gets to go against. I mean, you get better by playing against um, better competition. I'm a firm believer in that. I've seen it in rec football with my kids growing up. I've seen it in high school football with who you play in the regular season. I've seen it in college football. When you play better teams, you get better. Uh, so when you play against a better opponent, 
well, on the scout team, you get better. And uh, our guys have bought into that. We rarely have guys come complain because if they're not getting reps, they're actually wanting to go get reps. And that's about recruiting the right kind of person into your organization so they get value out of practice. Uh, and we take a lot of quality reps on those units. Hey, Kirby, what are some of the differences between Sam Pittman, your last offensive line coach, and Matt Luke, your current offensive line coach, in terms of philosophies and how they interact with the players? Yeah, I don't, I don't really get into comparisons. I think both those guys are so good in their individual rights, it's unfair to really try to compare those two guys. They're both, number one, incredible people, incredible men, uh, strong belief in family. Uh, they're everything that epitomizes what you want in a assistant coach slash a line coach because they care about the team uh, more than themselves and they sell that to their players and they're both great re recruiters. Coach, I want to ask about what Arkansas is uh, doing defensively. It looks like they're kind of going to kind of an umbrella look uh, a, a little bit and just uh, what about that and the challenges that's going to present on Saturday? Yeah, first off, Barry does an incredible job. Barry is one of the one of the few people that you can say he, he takes what he has and he gets what he has to work really well. So like he's been different in different places. He's not been the same guy everywhere he's been. He's he's morphed, he's changed, he's changed with college football. He's innovative. He goes and looks and studies what other people are doing. Um, he, he, he forces your hand to maybe play left-handed, you know, where you, you can't do some of the things you want to do. Um, he's really good at it. And not only that, he's got some really good players doing it. Make no mistake about it. This is not the Arkansas that we played last year. Okay, those, those guys up front, he got three transfers, two from Missouri, one from Illinois State, and they play extremely hard, and they're extremely physical, and they create an immense amount of problems for the people they play. And, uh, you know, they, they will not be taken lightly by this group because they're doing an incredible job of creating problems for offenses just look at what they've done with those, with really the two big games everybody knows about, but they've really done it in every game. Kirby, obviously asking about Sam, but just in general, do do coaches look at other assistant coaches and say, this guy's going to be a good head coach, this guy may not be a good head coach, this guy will be a good head coach, or does a lot of it, y'all think, just come down to fit, timing, luck, that kind of thing? You know, I don't know. You're asking from the perspective of who does a does a head coach look at that, or from does what, what you think you think what other people what what's the prevailing kind of thought on that? In, in I don't know. I really don't know what other people think. I think you've got a president AD role that may think one thing. You've got coaches who may think another, and none of us are necessarily always right. Right? You got agents who think they know. So, uh, you know, I think everybody has their own opinion of what's going to work, what's not going to work, and what's a fit for this place and a fit for that place and well they, they they're geographically here and they're geographically here what kind of i think everybody's got their own opinion i i'm, I'm of the opinion a good football coach that is willing to sacrifice his own ego and say if i can go out and hire people um, smarter than me and people that are really good coaches and i'm gonna have a hell of a staff and not make it about myself then you got a chance to be successful now you got to recruit and you got to recruit well because nobody does real well without good football players I think that's a big part of that role, but Sam fits all that. He's a tremendous leader of men, and that's the number one discipline we're charged with. How do you lead your men, and how much do they believe in you? And that, he's got the ultimate right now going on because 100% those men in that locker room believe in Sam Pittman, and what he tells them to be true, they believe it, and they go out and play like it. Kirby, how much uh, value is there that you guys already – open the season in terms of a spotlight game with game day and, and uh, your guys are equipped to, you know, go through a week of preparation, uh, you know, without being distracted. We haven't really even thought about that because, you know, I look at it as they've had two massive games as well. I mean, there's no, there's no kid that's going to say, Oh man, this game was bigger than that game. They, they, they're all big. I mean, they're, they're all tremendously big games and they only get bigger from here. So I don't think anybody has an advantage uh, when it comes to that. The advantage we can have is can our crowd impact the game at, at 1201 like they could at 801. And that's the challenge that's uh, issued to, to our to our fans to prep for that and to be able to help us because, you know, we got this game at home. So that's supposed to be an advantage. And we got to try to make it an advantage because the teams that play at home, 
have across the board this year more than last year with packed stadiums have uh, you know had some kind of advantage at least crowd noise wise. Kirby, what is it about a second year jump? Obviously, you had a big jump from year one to year two with your program, and it looks like Sam is having a similar jump in, in his second year with Arkansas. Yeah, Sam had a big jump year one. I mean, <laughs> he, he had a tremendous jump, right? From like, uh, I mean, every game he won was one more. So, I mean, uh, he did a tremendous job there and continues to grow it. I think, I think what's really helped Sam is the buy-in and belief that the kids had in him that he's got either eight or nine super seniors. You know, eight or nine super seniors makes a big difference, guys. I mean, you're talking about those are Schaefer's and Devontae Wyatt's, two of our better, more experienced players. You you multiply that times four, and they got that. And, you know, they got 16-something seniors. They got uh, eight or seven or eight returning starters on both sides of the ball. I mean, you don't see that in the SEC. And I told people before the season started, write it down. Team with senior leadership, team with experience, team with the most seniors always does well in our conference. And no no, no doubt they're doing the same here. Coach, when you look at uh, Traylon Burks from Arkansas and just the kind of weapon, he just how big he is, how fast he is, what's that going to present to y'all on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he was that way last year. He's a competitor, loves the game. I love the way the guy plays. And he's multi-purpose. He can do so many things. Uh, they do a really good job of, uh, of using his skill set. I think Coach Bryles does a great job of making sure that the ball can get to him different ways, and uh, he's, he's a football player. Coach, you talked about the uh, running backs' explosive plays. That's kind of been a reoccurring theme after watching the tape. Have you seen anything that could help you in that area? As far as? I think the longest run from a running back this year is 23 yards. Yeah, I would say last year – wasn't a whole lot different like we didn't we, we weren't really explosive the last two years in the run game and some of that has to do with the way people are playing us some of it has to do with rpos being called being able to block you know more on the perimeter some of it has to do with the size of our offensive line you know you go back we we're a, a bigger more physical team um when we had the two uh, first round tackles and you know the, the, the explosive runs are about holes and displacement if you displace people, you get explosive runs. If you don't displace people, you don't get explosive runs. It's it's you, you got to be run efficient, and we've been run efficient. And efficiency to me is as important as explosivity. Like if you just said, hey, which ones? They're both important, but for our rushing average and our uh, run efficiency, the way we evaluate it, we've been on par with where we should be. We just haven't been explosive. And I would love to be explosive, but it's not more important than being efficient. You mentioned a second ago the, the not having the, the super big offensive linemen like Ben and Solomon. Is there is that just because of circumstance, because those guys graduated and you don't have younger guys that are quite at that size? Is it a recruiting shift? Is it is there anything that's led to that, or is it just circumstance? I don't think so. I mean, I think that we had a run there where we had two really massive, talented tackles, and I think our tackles are good now. They're just probably not first-round picks. And uh, those two guys were, and we were really big, and – Ben was really big. You know, Tate gave us more size, and we lost him. So it's one of those deals that I think we continue to improve. The guys we got are buying in. We're, 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 every team's different. So where we might not be as strong, we might be stronger in some other areas. Uh, we certainly have good depth. We've got uh, tight ends with different skill sets than we've had in the past. So we have to try to highlight those. Kirby, the, the blessing of having so many running backs that are guys you could use in the game, I guess, where do you – where are you in on maybe some guys need more carries to develop a rhythm in a game versus spreading out those carries? Not not at that point. I think it's important to stay healthy, stay fresh, use the hot hand, whatever that hot hand may be. Those guys are uh, all contributing factors uh, on special teams. I mean, each one of them is a really good special teams player in his own right and has a role, and those snaps are really valuable for us. And uh, unless there's a hot hand to the point where a guy's outrushing, making more people miss, where there's a considerable difference, we're going to use those guys. That's part of the recruitment, right, is that you're not getting uh, 20 to 25 carries because we are able to share the load. I think that helps us from a uh, turnover standpoint, a stamina standpoint, a health standpoint, a morale standpoint. But by all means, if we got a back out there that's making everybody miss, he'll be in the game. But at the end of the day, it's really for us about 
can you can you rush the ball efficiency efficiently and what do you do best like what is your skill set best suited to to make us successful Herbie, how do you evaluate Latavius uh, Brenny after four games? And when Tyke's ready in terms of his health, how do you kind of um, envision his role? It depends on how Tyke plays and practices, right? He hasn't had the luxury of practicing or playing. He was uh, practicing with us before. He was rotating with Brenny, but neither guy had distanced themselves to the point of being like elite or being on top of the position to the point where that person has to play more. They were rolling, and uh, we'll see um, how that goes with these guys. And uh, Brenny's really smart, very experienced, plays multiple positions, doing a good job learning his positions. There's some things Brenny can do better, and he'd be the first to tell you that. He's working on those to improve. Kirby, I think your Georgia teams are 11-6 and six in these top 10 games. Obviously, there's a lot of potential distractions in these environments. What have you done well to maybe not let those distractions affect your teams in these types of matchups? I don't know. Keep the main thing the main thing. I mean, it's the it's a simple saying, but it's really that simple that, you know, I, I don't think we lost some of those games because they were big games and they were distracted. I think it has a lot to do with the players on the field, and uh, that's what this will come down to, too. It won't be about whether game day's here or, or how many people are in the stands. I mean, that may impact the crowd noise, but that's not, at the end of the day, the, the, the players on the field have to play well, and I'm a lot more interested in the prep of that than I am some uh, secret factor. You've had freshmen come in and play well before, but for Brock Bowers to be playing this well this early, what separates him from, say, guys like Jake Fromm or George Pickens that have had Andrew Thomas that have had strong freshman seasons in the past? Well, I think he's been blessed with uh, other tight ends being out. John's been hurt. Arnell's been hurt. I think he's been given opportunity uh, because we've had some wideouts down so if you put a lot of those other factors back in maybe he's not as productive maybe we're not as productive um but he certainly works really hard and those other guys you just mentioned did too and a lot of being successful as a freshman is opportunity and uh he's taking advantage of his opportunity just double checking coach william pools is back this week uh, yeah after four. okay cool. yeah Kirby, outside of the magnitude of this matchup, is there anything that is driving your push to get the fans in there early? Um, you know, the previous noon game kickoff experiences and such? I would just say the opportunity to show the world Georgia. You know, for me, it's about recruiting. And I know this is the best university on planet, and I want everybody else to know it. So to do that, you need to have an a incredible fan base. That Our guys have been awesome this year. I just want that to continue. Uh, with an opportunity to to play early we're going to have tons of uh, great prospects here and we want to show them the hospitality that we expect uh, every home game to be like for them one more question anybody kirby you mentioned recruiting this is a 12 o'clock game give me your thoughts on having a 12 o'clock game and how that impacts recruiting I think it's all about how your fans handle it. You know, the fact game days here, I think that helps with recruiting. Um, I think the way our fans handle it and the atmosphere they create will help with it. It gives us probably more time at the end of the game as opposed to, you know, guys being gone and jetting out of here for long drives home. We probably get an opportunity to see them more uh, afterwards. It makes it tougher for guys from far away distances to get here, obviously, with a 12 o'clock kick. But with each, you know, uh, good thing, there's a negative thing. With all things, that's the case. So we try to make these things positive for us in recruiting this, this Saturday with a noon kick and make it best we can.